Today we'll learn how to draw any flower like this one in Clear Studio Paint. I want to add flowers to this illustration, and in doing so, I'll be teaching you how to draw detailed flowers for illustration. It can be used for both foreground and rougher ones for a background. For this exercise, we'll be using a simple flower, a lily. The process of sketching a flower is just three simple steps. First step, the stem. A flower is structured by two main parts, the stem and the petals. We first draw the stem using a cylinder and a sphere on top. This will determine where your flower is facing. For example, a curved line can make for droopy flowers, and a slanted one may indicate there is wind in the scene. Second step, geometry. We draw a geometrical shape to determine the perspective of our petals. This will depend heavily on the flower we decide to draw. For example, a tulip would have a pretty narrow cone directly connecting to the stem, while a petunia has a white cone at the top but tapers near the stem, while a daffodil is constructed out of two different geometrical shapes stacked on top of each other. Step 3. The petals. Each petal is similar to a small piece of soft square paper, and some have unique curves and shapes. Daffodils are triangular, while tulip petals are oval. Petunias are tapered squares. It's most important to pay attention to which part of the petal is connected to the stem. In separate layers, draw in squares connected to the sphere for each petal to get their perspective right. And then, draw the petals on top of them in another layer. Your layer order should look something like this. Keep in mind it might be easier to draw the petals on top after coloring the squares in the geometric shape you drew using the CSP color layer function. Do remember not to be too rigid following the guideline perspective squares we drew earlier, as some petals might be too oddly shaped to fit perfectly to a square. You can also add a few small garnishments such as leaves and stigma. Afterwards, you can turn off the squares you drew for perspective and delete the parts of the stem you cannot see and you've successfully drawn a flower. Optional step, line art. An optional step that might help you paint the flowers you drew earlier more easily is to merge all the layers and delete the hidden ones and then use the layer column function we used earlier on the whole flower and go over it slowly to make sharper lines. And then we can also paint the flower we just drew using another three simple steps. Step 1. Filling. For step 1, we will mark the drawing we did as a reference layer and use the fill tool to color the flower under the lines in the layer below. Don't forget to make sure your eraser is checked for reference layer in the tool details. Small tip, don't be scared to use the color tip tool for choosing the colors using pictures of other flowers. Step 2. Shading. Make a new layer, then clip it using this icon to your filled color layer that you have just made with the fill tool. Then you can start shading using a soft brush like this. Pay attention to the minute shade changes in the flower and worry about the texture later, for example, some flowers, such as petunias, have a soft gradient from pink to white, and red tulips are often gradient yellow at the edge of the petal, while daffodils can be made out of two solid colors. A great tip to shade correctly is to move your color wheel a bit to the left, and then move the color picker down from the original color you started with. You can do the opposite for adding some light. Oh, and don't forget to shade this time as well. Step 3. Texturing. With a hard brush like this, and the occasional soft brush like before, make a new layer above the color layer and clip to the layer below as we did before. You can now start drawing in the texture of the petals in the new layers we just made. This might require some trial and error, so take your time during this phase. Something that might help you is to enable the pressure opacity sensitivity on your brush. Optional step. If you already have an established scene you're going to use a flower in like mine, you can color the line art or sketch lines to better fit your flower and scene. Then make a merge down copy of the flower you just drew and go over it with an overlay layer that is clipped to the merge layers. That will allow us to better fit the flower to the lighting of the scene. And that's it, you just colored your flower. Drawing flowers for backgrounds. At a time we blur the flowers in the background to create the illusion of depth. And we mostly look at them from above, so one easy way to draw flowers from a background is to forgo the stem and just draw the shapes of the petals connected to different spheres. We also won't need to draw dozens of flowers to fill a background as we're going to draw a few rough variations, using the same methods we did before, by drawing a sphere and connecting petals to it but foregoing the stem. After roughing out a few flower petals from different perspectives, we will fill them with color and lightly shade them as we did earlier. Color the sketch lines and optimally add an overlay layer flipped on top for a bit of lighter shadow, and then merge it together. 
Now we can start selecting using the lasso selection tool, and then we're going to copy paste different flowers we drew earlier and pull them together. Afterwards, we will bring the flowers over to an illustration and do what we just did with individual flowers, just with the whole flowers, copy pasting the whole layer and transforming it in multiple locations. And then we will merge all of those copy paste flowers to a single layer and transform it to fit a perspective of our scene. In this case, by searching the bottom two points in the free transform bounding box by pressing Ctrl T by default and then pressing Ctrl as we stretch the points. Copy the layers of flowers we just made and put it below the flowers and then paint it a dark color by locking its transparency to indicate the cast shadow the flowers would make on the ground. And then set it to overlay, move it down a bit and add also blur them a bit as object is a distance from the ground after your shadow blurred a bit, using a Gaussian blur effect that can be found under the filter tab. I also recommend making the background color a bit darker than the color of the flowers you just chose. Then copy the background flower layer, blurring the copied flowers a bit and then erasing the parts closer to the camera with a soft brush. You can optionally do this with multiple copies of your flowers to create a more in-depth effect. For example, having three different copies of the flowers, each blurred more to indicate how far it is from the camera. And of course, an overlay layer on top to fix the lighting. We will also use the same method we just used to draw the flowers in the girl's basket. However, we will try to pay attention to how gravity might affect those flowers and still layer on top of each other. We can use the same square in the perspective method we did earlier for all the flowers, and you don't need to worry about getting the cleanest lines. Finishing with a sketch, you can easily fill in it with the fill tool as we just did, shape, texture, and overlay, and it should look something similar to this. And of course, we can use our original method to draw a flower to create the foreground flowers. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, it was an entry for the monthly tip from CSP.